What's up guys? It's Redius here and in today's video we're making another jacket. This time this jacket isn't for myself, it is in fact for one of my love friends. I'm really excited to actually make this jacket. So over the last couple of nights I've kept myself awake thinking about this jacket and what I want to actually do with this jacket simply for the fact that he's given me free reign over it so that's really exciting. It gives me a chance to express some creative liberties with it and I just hope he likes it in the end. He provided the fabric for it so that just leaves me to making it really. Now I really wanted to make this video to help some of my fellow LARPers because I've had a good conversation with a couple and they've been asking how do you make jackets? How you know this process. Now I remember my first video that I did on making a jacket. It ended up not being a jacket. It ended up being a vest sort of dress thing. So this time it will actually be a jacket. First things first I will show you the patterns I use as all my jackets literally follow the same pattern. So we'll start with that. Now I've decided to sit down because I'm really lazy and standing was just too much. Now I feel like I should talk a bit more about the pattern that I use and the basic overall of how I make my jackets. I'll quickly sketch out like the rough shape of a jacket. So most of my patterns I actually make myself. So I have the top section of my pattern which consists of a back panel and two front panels. Now you can make them a little bit more complicated. Now for me a back panel looks like this. You can change these back panels by tapering in the sides more if you have hips. Obviously females have hips so I always taper mine in. and. To measure this length, you measure obviously from under your arm down to either your waist or your hips. For me, I go to where my hips sit. Uh, so it usually makes this section a little shorter. So it usually cuts off about like there. So it's usually a shorter section. Now that's the back panel. Easy, it's got the neckline. It's a little, it's higher than the front neckline and it has the armholes. To measure your armholes, just measure the circumference of your arms. It's that simple. And to measure across this section, you just measure across your back. It's pretty simple. If not, you can trace this pattern from a shirt or a jacket you already own, which is how I got most of my patterns to begin with. So that's the back. Now the front is basically the same. You can change the collar lines, you can have them round, you can have them just straight. I'll just do a round one, I guess. All right, so this is the front. You can usually get away with just doing one front panel pattern where you just put it on the fabric that's folded and just cut out the two pieces. So you basically end up with this. Anyway, once again, you make, measure the same length. If you put these pieces together, they should basically be the same pattern, if that helps. And then basically what I do for the bottom is like a circle skirt. So you basically have a pattern piece like this. I'll show you when I make this part of the jacket. So you basically have this piece of fabric folded multiple times with this pattern piece on top. When you cut it, you can get four pattern pieces like this and then you can join them. What I'll probably do is make some smaller sections which are more triangle so that I can add uh, the detail fabric that I've been given, which is also what I do on my jacket. So I'll go show you one of my jackets as well. Um, but basically getting smaller triangles of fabric to add like a pleat effect to it and it also adds detail to your jackets. So I'll go grab one of my jackets and I'll show you that. Now this is probably one of my favourite jackets that I have actually made and it's not great. Those parts on the bottom of the jacket, the skirt part of the jacket I guess, you have these panels which is that triangle shaped panel I was talking about or not triangle, just those bigger triangles and then you have the little detail triangles. So when it's on, so we have the front panels and these are like the detail parts. So yeah, basically we have skirt, back and front, that simple. Now the sleeves can be a little fiddly. The best way to describe it is it's a rectangle. So something just like that at the top and then just have that curved around the edge. I think it will work, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So now that we have that basic pattern in mind, I want to talk about making them a little more detailed. Once you've got this basic pattern down, you can actually start making it look more detailed. With the back panel, you can separate it into sections so that it's not just one massive panel. 
The only thing is that this can be a little complicated to keep track of your pattern pieces once you've cut them out obviously, like obviously, but other than that it's fine. So it basically turns the back panel into three pieces. My jacket I showed you has this design on the back. Apart from this line at the top tapers into a point rather than it goes straight across. So it points down rather than going straight across. So here we have my rough pattern that I just drew up quickly. Now I'll go into a little bit more detail about this. Uh, basically we have the back pattern, the front pattern, the skirt and the sleeves. Now all I mean about this is this section here will have to be your waist. So you'll have to measure your waist length to get the circumference of like the circle skirt part. But you can add these sections here to actually make your jacket more puffy, which is what I usually do because who doesn't like puffy majestic jackets? So yeah, this is basically the basic pattern that I use for making my jackets. Pretty simple, honestly. Nothing over the top, nothing super complicated. This is what I do. So now that you've got your pattern basically, there's two options. The first option is you can make a mock-up, which basically consists of you making the jacket out of, say, scrap fabric. And that is actually really smart because you can try that jacket on, you can tailor it so it fits you a bit better, and then you can cut that up and use that as the pattern. Then there's the second option, which is basically just jump into it and use your pattern, make a jacket, and get onto it. Which is basically what I do, so we're gonna do that and we'll see how this goes, I guess. So let's talk patterns. Now, this is just a rough example of how I set up my pattern pieces, simply for the fact that I may have already done the top part of this jacket. Ignore the mess. We have the back panel, the front panels, and the neckline panel for the back. You could probably sort those around, whatever. Basically, I have the fabric folded, so when you cut these two, you'll get two pieces. When you cut this on the fold, you'll get one piece. Now, the only difference I've done is for the top part of this jacket, I've used the same fabric for the lining, which I will show you. So basically I needed four of each. All right, so I've sewed the top section of this jacket together. So I'll show you it, I guess. This is what we're working with. As you can see, we have the front panels. They had the curved neck, the straight, and then it goes straight down. Now, if I turn it around, we have the back panel, which I ended up cutting in the middle anyway for an extra seam. And then we have the two back panels. Okay, so I've just made my skirt pattern piece. So it's that weird, long, flat, pointed triangle piece. And I also have this. That triangle is the pleat piece. It will be put on fancier fabric, which is behind me. So we won't be doing that on this one. So I'm having a quick lunch break, but I have two more pattern pieces in the red fabric I need to make. As you can see from the front there, it's like a gap like this that I need to fill. So I'm gonna do two more pattern pieces on the back and then I'll do the fancy fabric in the triangles. For that added detail, you can kind of see on the side as well. So we're gonna enjoy my lunch first and then I'm gonna get right back into it. I've moved on to the fancy fabric. Very pretty fabric, it, however, it's really, really silky so it slips really, really easily, which is kind of annoying, but I've just weighted it down just so I can pin the pattern. Now, you may notice that this is a different pattern piece. The original one's still sitting up there. However, this is actually the pattern piece I used for the other pieces, but I've folded it in half to make it smaller. Now, the reason I did this was because I, I needed a couple inches um, for the waistband of the jacket because it was slightly off uh, about that much on each end. So this will give it that extra length that it needs. I've attached the skirt just with pins at the moment just to show you what the back panels will look like so there's the three hidden panels on the back which one it's like down you can't really see them but like when you're running around and shit it's like poofing around you'll be able to see them uh, if I rotate it there's the two front stripes at the front 
and it sits really nicely. I'm not mad with that. So we're actually on to day two of making this jacket. After lunch yesterday, I what did I even do? I didn't really do much. I just finished the skirt part of the jacket and just kind of left it. It was already like four o'clock by the time I'd finished doing all of that. So <laughs> I was like, nah, we're gonna leave it and I'll take it from today. However, I'll be real with you. Um, <laughs> mistakes were made last night and I didn't sleep very well. I'm so tired. You can probably see it in my eyes. I feel like they're like on the verge of shutting. It's fine. It was worth it. So I basically, I went to bed at 1.30 last night. Mistakes were made there to begin with. Uh, then I woke up at 5.40 <laughs> and decided to not go back to sleep, but proceed to watch the Minecraft Championships because I'm a nerd. I didn't watch it. I sat, I laid in bed with it playing on my bedside table and just kind of tried to go to sleep to it, which I fell asleep on and off, which I think is where the fact that I'm so tired is coming from is the fact that it was very much on and off sleep but I'm happy for Red Rabbits for winning um, it was it was a good watch so I'm not complaining anyway I went back to sleep and now it's almost 11 o'clock so <laughs> we're going to get back into this jacket I'm having a coffee in hopes that it wakes me up I'll probably have another coffee after this in hopes that it wakes me up more the first thing on the agenda for today with this jacket is I need to work out the lining for the skirt part the guy who brought the fabric for this jacket didn't quite get enough of the lining fabric. So I feel like I'm going to have to do half and half. So I'm going to have to do, I have a lot of the red left. So I'm probably going to use the red and do four pattern pieces in the red and then do the rest in the actual lining he wanted the jacket to be lined with. Only reason I'm doing this is because I really want to line the sleeves with that lining fabric because it will make it look pretty. So I'm hoping it works because it needs to be lined. Otherwise, if it was my jacket, I just wouldn't line it. So this was a nightmare to our pin, but this is the skirt section. So we have the top layer and then under that I have the lining layer. So we'll see how this goes and hopefully it works because oh, I'm over it. <laughs> so I finished the skirt and I've added it to the jacket. This fabric I'm using is making the biggest mess. It's driving me insane, but whatever. I haven't sewn it on yet. It fits, it has a pleat at the back, it's looking good, I'm really happy with it. The issue with the lining, I simply worked out by just doing it that and then red and so forth. I'm really happy with it. So it's day three of finishing this jacket, all I have to do is attach the skirt onto it and I have to do the sleeves. That is everything apart from the small details and stuff but I'm really excited and fingers crossed I actually get it finished today so with that let's get onto it and let's get this jacket finished. I'm so excited to actually have it done. Alright so let's talk sleeves. Now the pattern I gave was this shape for the top of the sleeve. I wanted to change this and I, I did say that and I did change it. So how these sleeves work is basically if you were to fold this sleeve in half and have a half circle on either side that would join at this seam of a shirt. You'll have some that comes to the front and some that goes to the back. Now I wanted these sleeves to go from that seam down the back and that's it. I didn't want them to come to the front. So with saying that what I did was basically cut the sleeve in half so that I had half a circle, which would go from the back and down the back. The sleeves are a simple rectangle of fabric, the added detail, and the lining is the same pattern piece on the back. So I'm going to attach these to the jacket and we'll go from there. Crinkle. So with that, we are at the end of the video. All I had to do was attach the collar and I finished the sleeves. I'm I'm really happy with it and the person that I made it for is really happy with it and I can't wait for him to have it for himself, to try it on and just enjoy it for what it is really. After 
three days of arguing with the jacket and the stretchy fabric and all that sort of stuff, the jacket's done! And I'm actually really really happy with it. Obviously in that video of me showing you the jacket, it doesn't sit on my body properly, but that's because it's not made for me. Being a jacket for a male, the waist is lower, hence this happening, like this bit here. Normally, as I said, I would have my waist up higher and then I'd flare out, but being for someone who's built differently than me, fingers crossed it fits him and I hope he really enjoys it. So with that, this video is finished. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it helps my fellow rats and some other people in the LARP community. And with that, that's done. The next sewing thing I'm hoping to do in the future is this fun little pattern and I'm really excited so we'll see what happens. I might film it, we're gonna make some little corsets and that makes me really happy. So with that one, I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys!